Hi, everybody. <laughs> How are you? Good. We're here in Brookline, Massachusetts. I'm so glad to see you all. Long time no see. Long time no see. Um, we're talking about Robert Lowell's poem, For the Union Dead. It was written in 1960, and um, it was written just too late to go into, just after uh, Life Studies, which is published in 59. And it became the title poem in the next book. Uh, it's a long, po longer than the poems that we use in Mod Po typically. Okay, so the first section we're going to talk about is the first uh, two stanzas plus a little of the third. Where are we and what, what, what is the time signature? Where are we? Mm. We're at the old aquarium. It's mm -hmm. boarded up. When? You said 1960, right? That's when yeah. the poem was written. When, meaning now, the, now the present of the poem? So I think the aquarium was shut down in the late 40s and it stood there as a, um, a how it was like housing for homeless people. So he's so, revisiting. Yes, yeah. he is. Yeah. He's, he's like, going back to back a spot. To, and why would he go back? Because maybe he grew up there. Well, we know something from the next stanza. Yeah. As he's, a child, he's, he's, long, he's exactly. longing. I think there's a longing mm -hmm. here. What did he do nostalgia. as a kid? It's nostalgia. He's nostalgic? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. What did he do? What did he, he went do to, when he, he went, went there? Well, his hands on a glass. Yeah. Yeah. Looked at the fish. Didn't we all? I yeah. think he put his yes. nose. Yeah. Didn't he put his yeah. nose? Yeah. He did. I mean, he he crawled like a snail on the glass. So the cloud compliant he's, fish. he's a little kid. Your dating helps us, Nancy, because so he grew up uh, and you know, in the 30s, 40s, and he mm -hmm. goes to, okay, so he's, going back to something of his childhood. So, the, so narratively, it's complicated. The first stanza is something of the present. We don't know if it's the exact present of the poem, but it's now, the word now. Right? Then once, next stanza, once he remembers. He's gone to the old aquarium. He's doing what he used to do. And then he draws back again in the present, and then help me understand the time of this. I often sigh still. For the dark downward and vegetating kingdom. Why does he do that? He's nostalgic still, like wanting that to be like it used to be. Mm. Yeah, sighing is this. The oh. fish. Seeing the fish. And he yeah, sighs he's because. Wow. He's nostalgic. He's sad. For what, down though? Down For what? For, For what, what was. Used to be. Is he, is he. Is he nostalgic for the happy clownfish? By the way, I don't know if clownfish are actually happy, but <laughs> happy clownfish and, you know, porpoises yeah. that would play ball with you. No, what is he? Uh, but look, oh, what's no, the image? No, no, no. Is it a happy it's image? Yeah. It's almost like a limbic image. Yeah. Dark. Yeah. 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 It's a Dark. Limbic. Very, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's, he's sighing for the dark. Downward. These are not positive terms. Mm -hmm. right. Dark downward vegetating kingdom of fish and reptiles. There's, there's actually yeah. something restful in that too. Yeah. I know it mm. might sound <laughs> antithetical, Marble. but yeah. Okay, so now the next section, and this is a rough, you know, people don't read poems this way, but we're just sort of portioning it out. The next section starts with One Morning Last March, which is a different time, and ends with the garage's earthquake. So this is this is all about what's happening in the Boston Common. Now, who wants to say something about it? What's happening? Anna, what's happening? Um, I think he is drawing this comparison between um, the feeling of going to the uh, old aquarium and seeing this like desolate, abandoned space and now looking at the excavation of what was a very used, much beloved space. Mm -hmm. The Boston Common? The Boston Common, and feeling uh, maybe a little ambivalent <laughs> about uh, how the city is using resources, how the city is using public space. This is, this is an infrastructure poem. And then at the end of this section, he introduces Colonel Shaw. Doesn't identify Robert Gould Shaw by name. Doesn't identify him as <clears throat> really like Lowell, born into a prominent Boston family. And intermarried with the Lowells. Everybody and intermarried. So, so Shaw and Lowell you know, might as well be the same yeah, family. Same. Right? <laughs> yeah. So he introduces Colonel Shaw 
way into this poem. What particular important history of Boston is being ignored by the city fathers? It's abolitionist mm -hmm. history, mm -hmm. which had its own hypocrisies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's what... that one. Mm -hmm. that one. Um, so Shaw, his, the, the Boston Shaws of that time were a prominent abolitionist family and, and dad and young Robert kind of worked together to get a commission, which Robert first refused or resisted, but then eventually uh, a so-called Negro infantry, a, a, a unit of black soldiers. So, and so Shaw, Shaw led this group and many of them were slaughtered and he himself was killed. So this is the thing that Lowell, the speaker anyway, is identifying as threatened by the building of parking garages. Mm -hmm. So he's got the problem stated by this point, and he keeps going back to his own childhood, which I think is important. All right, the next section is, is really, as far as I can tell, just the next four lines. It stands by itself. Two months after marching through Boston, half the regiment was dead. At the dead, now he switches after a semicolon another time. Mm -hmm. At the dedication, William James could almost hear the bronze Negroes breathe. Okay, lots of histories being covered. Yeah. Somebody explain. Edith, you got this? Um. Okay, so two months after, so during the Civil War, it's, there's a lot of time happening. Yes, so it's very confusing, War, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Let's right. count the number of times we have so far. Mm -hmm. We have Lowell's boyhood. He went, he was a freshman in Pres college in 1935, so I'm guessing it's like the not late 1920s or early 30s. Then? Present 1960, past his childhood, 35. Again, the present. And for, also last uh, March. For the excavations. Mm -hmm. And right. last March, spring. And now he's going back to the Civil War. And then, and then he's also, forward. Mm -hmm. But then he's referencing Gauden's thing, which was 1896. And it was dedicated in 1897. Thank and you. William James, mm -hmm. professor of, actually, was he actually psychology? I think yeah. 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 a yeah. psychology yeah. professor yeah. at Harvard yeah. was there and made a comment. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. so lots of history. All right, now we move on to the next section, mm -hmm. which is going to be the next three stanzas. What's being said? Lots. Yeah. Wow. <coughs> Helen? Well, you know, the, um, that was such a tough line to read that the monument sticks like a fishbone in the city's throat. Just the choice Refers to maybe Boston not being so unequivocal about civil rights? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean... That was a uh, funny way of putting it. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean... Just what is the hi history of Boston and civil technology. rights and busing and so forth? Yeah, I, um, I was living out west during busing, so <coughs> I, didn't, I didn't experience that uh, firsthand, but um, I know about what happened then. And, um, but I think the fishbone for me, because he's talking about the cod earlier, and the cod is the symbol of Massachusetts, and... And so, I mean, just what a, a right-on kind of... Yeah, it's um, allusion to the yeah. query. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, the cod is everywhere. I think it's in the State House. I think there's a huge cod in the State House. It's, it's kind of our fish, you know. And, so and, now, now, the, <laughs> now the cod, which is yeah, the very yeah. symbol of the mm -hmm. region, mm -hmm. is and also harkens back to his happy childhood with the aquarium that's now also been taken down. Right. Now that sticks in the, the throat, throat of the city. Mm -hmm. It likes to think of itself as a liberal forward city, but it's mm. actually one of the most segregated in the nation. Right. Mm. And at the time of this writing, 1960, there was a lot going on, and, and Lowell was mm -hmm. absolutely uh, anti-segregation and pro-civil rights. We'll just mm -hmm. state that for the record. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. their monument sticks like a fishbone. So they've got this monument, and Shaw, mm -hmm who led the Negro regiment is a symbol of something that's a trouble to the city. And they've cordoned him off with pumpkin orange <laughs> girders and fencing. So kind of an obvious symbol. He came upon this, Lowell did, and decided this was a symbol for the... So if you were a parking garage advocate, you might take exception to this logic connecting it to civil rights, wouldn't you? Mm 
So when you get to the next two stanzas, which I've identified as another section of the poem, mm -hmm. and Lisa was pointing toward this a minute ago, we now have a much broader canvas. And Lowell is doing, he's really widening this out. And this is a risky move because the poet poem has been so particular so far. Mm -hmm. But this is, this is the thing about New England. Sparse. On a thousand small town New England greens. In other words, this is playing out everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. The old white churches hold their air of sparse, <coughs> sincere rebellion. Frayed flags quilt the graveyards of the Grand Army of the Republic. The stone statues of the abstract Union soldier grow slimmer and younger each year, wet, wasp wasted. They doze over muskets and muse through their sideburns. Okay, so first somebody talk about this strategy, this widening out. How is that working? Susan, what's happening there? Um, well, he's talking about all of the towns around New England and how they embody the memory <coughs> of this time in a statue mm -hmm. as Boston. And the Grand Army of the Republic? Which is that? Union Army. That's the Union Army. Okay, so these, these are greens set up with statues commemorating the people from those little towns who fought for the North. Dear. Flags are frayed and it's, things are kind of worn. Mm. Then the stone statues of the abstract Union soldiers, so each village had a general, essentially unknown soldier, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that they ironically grow slimmer and younger. Why? Because the rest of us go Is down. getting older. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true, but also because they're wearing down. Yeah. Right? And then he uses an ellipsis. Because next, what do we get? The rest of the poem. So I'm going to read it, and it goes everywhere. So it's like a summation of all the time signatures. Shaw's father wanted no monument except the ditch. What's that mean? Garages. Where he, where he died. Where he's buried. Yeah. They yeah. They he's buried. Yeah. 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 Father said, father said yeah. he needs to be buried with his, with his men. Yeah. Right? Right. Sergey went to the third meaning. As your, mister, your middle name is third meaning. <laughs> meaning Shaw's father wanted no monument except for the parking garage. Because that's it. The ditch is the big dig. Where his son's body was thrown and lost with his N-word. The ditch is nearer. Okay. Well, that is a Lowellian move. What's he doing there? The ditch is nearer. The ditch was the place where the battle actually happened and they actually died and they, they couldn't do that. I don't remember where it was, but they couldn't do it and the Gaudens Memorial couldn't go to where the 54th was massacred. So politically it had to be in Boston. Right. The ditch is near, it's just simply the death. It's coming soon. Mm -hmm. But it's... The, the grave. Nuclear, the grave is near. It's nuclear, nuclear war. Mm -hmm. We're getting the nuclear war. <laughs> We're, you guys are so good at this. Why am I being the slow one here? Um, in the first level, the ditch is near is a, is a very, it's a turn back toward the dig, right? So there is the ditch of what happened in the South during the war, and then the ditch is nearer. As Edith is reminding us, that's where it needed to be, but the ditch is also the dig. And nearer is a historical thing. Nearer is a, an ideological thing, meaning what's happening in Boston now, that is nearer. And that's all this civil rights stuff and the atomic bomb. Okay, there are no statues for the last war here. What's the last war? World War II. 60. Korea. The Second World War. Well, yes, mm -hmm. okay. technically, the Korean War. Mm -hmm. But that's not what he means. He means the Second World War. We know he does because he refers to Hiroshima. There are, why are there no statues for World War II? I'm not really asking you that, but it's a curiosity. Lowell is pointing out something specific about Boston. 
Um, there are no statutes for the last war in 1960 for the 1939 to 45 war for the United States, 1941 to 45. On Boylston Street, a commercial photograph shows Hiroshima boiling over a Mosler safe. Now there's a semicolon separating the statement that there are no statutes to World War II, and then the semicolon, and then something there is. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, uh, what is he saying about the advertisement uh, well. for the safe? What's he saying? Is he saying that that is the best we can do as a memorial for World War II? Well, and what is it? Mm -hmm. It's not it's, part of the mythology, so it's only in the commercial stuff. It's not mm -hmm. actually being commemorated. And, and what is the commercial saying? Well, it's a really offensive commercial. That a Mosler yeah. safe could survive. Yeah. A, no, Buy a Mosler safe. Yeah. The Rock of Ages. Yeah. The Rock of Ages safe. Yeah. Because? It can survive a blast. Mm -hmm. And why would they, Lisa was hinting about this at this in a minute ago, why would an advertiser in 1960 say, there's no monument to World War II, but, says Lowell, he's really smart about this, but we do have advertisements that tell everybody to buy stuff. You can protect, what, your uh, Social Security card and the bonds, your U.S. savings bonds and, and your precious photographs of your great-grandmother in the safe because when we're all dead from the nuclear war, right. it'll still be there. <laughs> <laughs> This is Boston for him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A commercial photograph shows Hiroshima boiling over a Mosler safe, the rock of ages that survived the blast. Then space is nearer. <coughs> Help. It was Kennedy. Space race. Yes, space yeah. race. Glenn. Glenn. That was later though. Glenn hadn't ridden yet, and mm -hmm. Kennedy hadn't declared that we shall go to the moon yet. Not yet. But, yeah. oh yeah. Because what is it that's making us worried about the nuclear annihilation? Watching it on TV. Sputnik and all that. The Soviet Union uh, is making us think about space, space being space. nearer. Yeah. The whole idea was if Sputnik is up there, then what? What could happen next? They could um, take us over. So. Mm -hmm. They would, the Russians would take over. You were missing a few steps, but yes. Uh, <laughs> it, if Sputnik is up there, the right. first thing people worried about was that it could carry some kind of nuclear device and come over us and, okay, space is nearer. And then we switch to the speaker again. It's been a little while since we've seen the speaker. When I crouch to my television set, the drained faces of Negro school children rise like balloons. All right, what's that? Mm -hmm. They're in the buses in South Boston going to their schools. Also, mm -hmm. so segregation in general. It's too early. It's, it's, yeah. it's too yeah. early. It's too early. Yeah. Not busing yeah. in Boston. It's no, the federal it's the South. Uh, so that segregation. Right. right. It was in the 70s. Desegregation in schools in the South. But in the Federally South. enforced yeah. desegregation yeah. Yeah. in the South. Probably this is. What's the first? 1957. Mm -hmm. yep. There's a series of them. It doesn't have to be a particular mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. So there's Lowell crouching to watch his television set and sees what? The drained faces of Negro school children. It's like balloons. So they're unembodied, really. I mean, that's when mm -hmm. you think of a balloon. Mm -hmm. Why are they drained? Why are the faces drained? I'm scared. scared. You've seen the images of yeah. children. Wow being escorted by, you know, the federal oh, troops yeah. into yeah. schools. Yeah. Yeah. People were yelling at them, throwing things Same at them. Same as the soldiers. Yeah. 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 Frightened. Yeah. And what in the poem does this remind us of? Same as the soldiers. The soldiers, mm -hmm. who were marched through Boston, by the way, mm -hmm. on their and way the to fish, the fish. And the bubbles. Mm -hmm. the the fish. Right. And what they're rising the like balloons, Lisa? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like the bubbles from mm -hmm. the fish, mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. noses of the couch and flying fish. So he's back to that. Mm -hmm. Colonel Shaw is riding on his bubble. <laughs> he waits for the blessed break. And what is it that Lowell, as a child, kept wanting to do to those bubbles? Mm -hmm. Break them. 
verse yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> he waits. That's Shaw, not the speaker. Mm -hmm. Not Lowell as a child, but Shaw. Mm -hmm. But it might as well be the speaker. Mm -hmm. The break would be what? Bursting of the bubble. Mm -hmm. Also breaking the lines. Rest. Mm -hmm. Breaking mm -hmm. the lines. Rest. Taking a break. It's blessed. The break probably is a movement in the forward direction during this civil rights crisis. Mm -hmm. Then we get summary. The aquarium is gone. Mm -hmm. Everywhere, giant finned cars nose forward like fish. A savage servility mm -hmm. slides by on Greece. Mm. What's being said? Well, I feel like there's a, a something implied in the poem about this time period in the 60s <laughs> that's not being mentioned, which is the rise of capitalism mm -hmm. and what that relationship is with the history, the personal and the city's history that he's addressing. And what's he complaining about in this last image? I think he's also contrasting the, mm. the parade of cars mm -hmm. with the parade of soldiers, mm -hmm. which is, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. if you look at that statue, it's four rows deep of soldiers mm -hmm. sort of parading in this noble... Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the but, he, but everything has declined, no? Yeah. Because yeah. now it's, it. it's conspicuous consumption cars, mm -hmm. and why are they driving in the middle of this great city that should have better mass transit. <laughs> Why? Why? Because they build all these parking lots. <laughs> this is not an anti-parking lot poem, but it is. It's largely a poem that's saying, I am going to connect the thing that we do to our cities and the assumptions to a series of failed histories. That's a big thing he's trying to do. I, I'm not going to ask you whether it works or not, or maybe, we, maybe I can at the very end, but le I'm still stuck on this last <laughs> image. The aquarium is gone, but... The replacement for fish. Right. All, you don't need an aquarium. You've got <laughs> Boston. <laughs> and why do they nose? Why do cars nose around? Why don't they just rock it around? Traffic. traffic. It's an image of traffic, and he calls it a savage servility. And they slide by on Greece, because of course cars are greasy. But it's possible that he's one of those uh, longtime Bostonians who's saying, gosh, it's this city, they should just leave it alone. What was wrong with it? I think there's some of that. There's well, some of that. But he is taking a progressive view on civil rights, and this yes, is his yes. strategy. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's a very risky strategy yeah. to say that the whole problem here is this impulse mm -hmm. to build a garage, to, to become servile to gas guzzlers, to you know, advertise safes that can survive an atomic war. This is a conscientious objector. He didn't fight in World War II. Mm -hmm. Now, whatever you think of that conscientious objection, is complicated, he's psychologically a very complicated person, one has to respect that. That's quite a view. Mm -hmm. And one imagines his view of Hiroshima after being a CEO. Thank you all. This was great. You did such a great. Give yourselves a big hand. Um.